it's not uncommon for conversations that you have with others about Christianity or about theism um, to degrade into battles about uh, Bible contradictions. And, and uh, some people have been encouraged to, when challenged about a contradiction in the Bible to say, say, well, where are the contradictions? Show me the contradictions, you know. And uh, I, let me tell you what I think is going on there. I think what's going on there is people are trying to disprove Christianity by disproving the doctrine of inerrancy. And I'm an inerrantist. I, don't, I, I, I believe what the Bible says to be true is actually true. But I don't think that's a battle that's wise to fight with outsiders because I don't think it's necessary to prove inerrancy in order to demonstrate that theism is true or Christianity is, is true. And if you try to do that, you just get off on a rabbit trail that's, that's messy, okay? Here's our case. When the gospel was brought to the first century, Jews and Gentiles, the testimony was of Jesus Christ crucified and risen from the dead. It wasn't a testimony about the inerrancy of the full corpus of scripture. People were told about what the Messiah did on their behalf and how he, how he demonstrated that his claims were true the death and resurrection of Christ. Now, the record we have of that is in the primary source historical documents on the life of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Our task then, it seems to me, is not to try to prove inerrancy of those documents, but to try to demonstrate that they're just simply re historically reliable when tested against the standard um, canons of historical research. And that can be done. I mean, the New Testament documents um, score really, really high when used um, as a historical source to describe what Jesus said and did. The salient details. Do there appear to be some contradictions? Well, there does seem to be some inconsistencies, which is exactly what you'd expect if you have independent historical accounts of something that actually took place. So my point about the inconsistencies here it's not that they can't be solved. I think they can with a lot of attention, but you don't need to solve them. That's not the real issue. The real issue is whether the Gospels can be historically relied upon or not, and that can easily be de demonstrated. And there's a host of books that demonstrate that this to be the case. Um, so it isn't inerrancy that's critical for our discussions with non-believers. That's more of an intramural discussion in the church, how we understand the Scripture, and an important one. But it isn't the one you need to resolve to deal with non-Christians. Don't get off on that rabbit trail. Focus in on the primary source historical accounts of the life of Jesus of Nazareth, his death, and his resurrection, and show that these are reliable. If we can show that, then we can show that Christianity is reliable as well.